This is Inspiring Design, where unique innovators come together to share their knowledge, share their insight, and keep us up to date with the latest industry trends. And here's your host, Rashan Senanayak. What's up, listeners? Welcome to a brand new episode of Inspiring Design in Season 2. I'm your host, Rashan Sananayaka, and Season 2 has been all about the student's point of view, and today is no exception to that. We're design thinking our way through education and design featuring students from all over Australia in various subject areas, disciplines, and stages in their career. I must say though, today will be the last episode to wrap up and one hell of an eye-opening season featuring some of the best future leaders of tomorrow. So let's kick things off for today. I have here with me one a very special guest, one of the high achieving students from Hillcrest Christian College, Shelby Parks. We're going to be talking all about the importance of failing forward. Shelby is a year 11 student at Hillcrest Christian on the Gold Coast and through a strong and dedicated work ethic, he has achieved exemplary results throughout his senior studies. His current academic focus is driven by the application of maths and science through to design and engineering. He is an aspiring and future engineer in the works, possibly in aeronautical and the mechanical division. Not to mention, by the way, his many different hobbies such as tennis, mountain biking, fishing, and electrical guitar. So without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome to the show, show Shelby. Cool. Thanks for having me. Can we start off with a little bit of background on yourself? What's been your story? Um, yeah, so I was born in Brisbane. Um, family lived there until I finished prep. And then I moved to the Gold Coast and I've been at Hillcrest because um, my both my parents are uh, teachers at Hillcrest, and so... That's good. That's um, lucky for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it worked really well with the lifestyle, so... Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and so we moved up here, and I've been here since year one, and um, yeah, it's just the same school whole way through. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it's been really good, because the teachers, they're both teachers, um, my parents, and so we're all in one place. And, yeah. Um, yeah, that's one real advantage about our family, so yeah. Awesome. And uh, where were you prior to the Gold Coast? Um, so I was down in Brisbane. We lived in Redcliffe for oh, yeah. a bit. Um, yeah. I was born in Caboolture mm-hmm. and, um, yeah, so I went to Mule College down there. Mm-hmm. Um, don't remember too much about it. Okay. I was pretty young back then, but, yeah. Um, yeah. And what do your parents teach here at Hillcrest? Um, so my mum is a primary art specialist mm-hmm. and my dad, he's a year four teacher. Um, so. Yeah. Okay, cool. So you actually got the, you, I noticed you love the engineering side of things. What happened there? Do you know? <laughs> um, yeah, so how I got into it. Um, I think I've always sort of loved like playing with things and tinkering. Like I've always sort of wanted to create stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I got into cooking a little bit. I remember because I just really liked the idea of how you could make something that everyone loves really quickly. Mm-hmm. Um and so I went through like little phases, like I remember I got into Nerf guns and I'd love wow. um, di- designing Nerf guns, like I'd just like draw them and wow. then, yeah, I just ran out of ideas. Um, yeah, fair enough. But, yeah, but I, I spent a lot of time on that and I wanted to be a Nerf gun engineer when I was um, in, the fu- in the future, I don't mm-hmm. know if that's a thing, but <laughs> I, I knew I wanted to do it. Yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah, I did tech studies um, when I was like in year seven and eight, mm-hmm. so like woodwork, mm-hmm. um, really enjoyed that sort of thing mm-hmm. and then when I sort of got into year nine we did an engineering which was sort of a bit it was a bit different to tech studies because it wasn't really about um us sort of like following a recipe to create something it was sort of like us improving or creating something to the best of its mm-hmm. um capabilities I guess so yeah. yeah that's sort of that's sort of how I got into it so I've always really loved the idea of creating something that people can love and yeah yeah so yeah, awesome. And I think, don't worry about a job not existing in the world right now. Mm. If it's something you love, you can definitely create that, that job in the future. Yeah. And I wanted to ask now, you you mentioned designing, you know, coming up with things, and that's very creative. That's almost design. What made you go into and think about aeronautical and mechanical divisions in engineering? Um, I think it's really impressed me systems and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I remember... 
because I've made an automata before, so it's basically you've got a crank, and mm-hmm. it's one crank that powers a whole machine, and it can do like three or four different things. And so mine was a rocket that went up and down, and it had like a little spinning satin on it, and um, it had a little countdown system, and it'd go three, two, one, and then the rocket would go up. Yeah. And so like I just love how you could make something that's like it, it's so complex, but like you can actually make it do so many things at once Mm -hmm. like that always amazed me Mm -hmm. and um i've always loved like i remember i got into drones as well Mm -hmm. um i think those sort of things are pretty cool like Mm -hmm. and i just like i don't know planes are just amazing and like rockets and that like they just they're just so amazing like it yeah i i just it really excites me sort of um the idea that you could create something like that that could um, yeah, take people into space and survive under those conditions or yeah. like, travel people around the world. So, yeah, awesome. Yeah. I actually spoke to um, a 10-year-old or 11-year-old from memory. He mm. is the youngest and the only NASA ambassador of Australia. Yeah. And um, he more or less said very similar things to yourself yeah. and his love for aerodynamics and and um, building things and, and whatnot. I think um, you should look into that because that's yeah. a very, very creative and um important decision actually yeah. now i wanted to ask you now you you mentioned obviously you, you love you you know what you love and mm-hmm. you've kind of mapped out a process to go through in, into into engineering how did you come up with that decision was it was there help from the school how did you actually was it parental support mm. how did that happen yeah come about? so i think the, like because i've been jumping around i said that like i wanted to be a nerf gun designer mm-hmm. and one stage I wanted to be a chef and then a marine <laughs> biologist like they were so random yeah um and they were all phases that only last like half a year or something they okay. weren't long-term things and uh, I, like looking back I couldn't see myself doing them in mm-hmm. the future mm-hmm. and so when I when I really like I had a little idea that I'd like to do engineering but when it was sort of set was when we did this um uh, our school got us to do this program called natural abilities mm-hmm. and it's where you do a bunch of little tasks and it sort of um, maps out this, uh, like how how you think and how you work and sort of had like a career mm-hmm. um, list mm-hmm. of like things that you would be able to um, achieve well in and that you would enjoy. And um, so I think on there, a lot of it was really design related stuff. A lot of it was engineering mm-hmm. and um, because I knew that that was based on my character and how I thought mm-hmm. that, like, that would be a long-term thing that I knew I would stick with and still be interested in. Yeah, so, yeah. I think, um, yeah, through the school doing that program, that really helped me to decide, yeah, I know that that'll be a long-term thing. It won't just be half a year. That, That's brilliant. Yeah. And I love the fact that it came from your own self-awareness guided by your school. So that's that's mm. awesome. Yeah. There's a lot of, I think, young people struggle to understand and make that lifetime decision going, I'm supposed to do this for the rest of my life. Mm. I know I went through that. Um, I wanted to be a doctor at first and then went into, uh, at one point I wanted to be a vet. Yeah. And then went into design and then went into architecture. And then here we are in business and education. So it's, mm. it is something that changes and evolves. Unlike 20 years ago, life is very different. Yeah. And the average um, career choices, do you know how many av- career changes there are in an average person now? Now? Um, it used to be two. Two. <laughs> do you know what it is now? It's 16. 16. Yep. Yeah. And me and my brother actually a few months ago actually mapped out how many I've gone through. I've gone through 18. 18. Wow. It's insane. That's yeah. the thing. So it's okay. And that's that's mm. brilliant. I love that you've gone through that process. Now, if you hadn't got that backing from the school and haven't gone through that program, I just want you to imagine yourself in that shoe. Do you think you'd be able to make that decision on your own at this age? Um, I think I'd be really unsure Mm -hmm. um because i know that engineering is a really good career in terms of um like uh, job opportunities um so i'd be pretty certain about that but i think the main thing for me would be is if my interest would keep going Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. i'd never be able to be certain of that yeah i'd always like have that in the back of my head like what if my interests change because um the yeah the way that i think is I get really into something and I get really focused on it and then I move on. Mm-hmm. And so that's sort of like, 
um, a bit of a fear of me like getting a set in a career. Um, so I try to keep my um, my focus or like what I would like to do. Um, I try to choose subjects mm -hmm. and opportunities that would allow me to enter something that's really broad. Mm -hmm. And so it could be some kind of science or maths job. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I think for me, I, I would never be certain of the future. Like if I would still have that passion for engineering that I do now, or if it would die out in like a year's time. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I no think worries. that would be the main thing that I struggle with. So. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a very valid point and, and a lot of students do go through that process and I think you're very lucky to go through the school and a school's program to be able to find that for yourself. So that's incredible. Yeah. Now, you've already mentioned the fact that, you know, you've gone through designing a number of different, um, let's say, career changes for the mm, sake of yeah. it. Let's talk about failure. What does this word mean to you just as a word? Yeah, um, I don't, I'm a perfectionist, mm -hmm. and so failure for a perfectionist is pretty big. Yep. It's not something <laughs> that you're usually comfortable with. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, as a high achiever and perfectionist, it's it's uncomfortable mm -hmm. a lot of the time. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I think in in maths and science at times, like definitely maths, but mm -hmm. also in a little bit of science, um, the Con uh, the concept of failure is something that's definitely negative. It's not a positive thing at all. Um, but I think in engineering, it's a bit more like in our school at least. Um, it's a lot more accepted yeah. and a lot more positive. It's like, hey, you will fail and you probably should fail. Mm -hmm. like, um, but the final outcome is working through those failures and sort of working through the problems that you have um, to create something that in the end, won't be a failure. So I think, yeah, maths and science, which mm -hmm. I really like, um, failure is negative, but in engineering, it's just part of the design phase and part of the process that you've got to work through. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's the brilliant part of it. it, it there's a saying that says, uh, if, if a person hasn't failed at something, don't trust them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because how can you otherwise, you cannot understand what works, what doesn't without actually going through that mm. process. And I love what you said about what failure means to you and you're right in maths there can be a definitive answer so mm -hmm. if you're not right that is incorrect yeah but if you're applying mathematics as a tool and then going through a design process for something like you even design the nerve guns nerve guns am i even pronouncing that right yeah, yeah, nerves. yeah. <laughs> nerve guns and um then it becomes a whole different perspective so do you think failure is a good thing or a bad thing um <laughs> well Personally, not not really. I don't like the final product to be a failure, definitely. Like, I don't like failure on exams. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, for me, like, it, like learning, our school calls it, um, like learning through failure, mm -hmm. um, they encourage that, but I'm still trying to get my head around it. Like, because if I fail an exam, that would be, like, <laughs> like the end of the world. Like, that's okay. a big thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't like failing through that. And it overwhelms me a lot of the time, mm -hmm. even in the engineering. Um, if I do fail um, at some point, it, it gets me overwhelmed, but um, I just really invest in it mm -hmm. and um, yeah, work really diligently and hard to sort of work through them. And yeah, but it, it's it's definitely an overwhelming thing for me. So yeah. Yeah. Do you think it's a, it's a mindset to look at how you look at failure? Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely think it is. Um, yeah, it, it's sort of like our school, my school is um, really important in shaping the, my mindset about it. Absolutely. Um, uh, I remember one one time uh, they were going to make a project where on a wall they had a big thing um, with a bunch of moving parts and it spelt out fail trail. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. the idea would be that when people walk through the school, they would see it and um, it sort of, uh, showing what um, one of the big parts of engineering is for our school. Mm. Um, and I remember I just, like, I was so confused about that. Like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I get that flirting's good, but I don't know that, like, that's such a... That's something that we should really be pushing so much. Mm. Um, but, yeah, so my mindset back then, like, that was, like... It was a while ago. It was probably about a year ago. Okay. Um, but, yeah, back then it was confusing and I hadn't really been exposed to that but 
Yeah, the more that you get exposed to it, the more your mindset changes. And, yeah, you can sort of accept failure a bit more and learn how to work through it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the beautiful part. If, if failure is accepted as an okay thing, you're not going to get punished, you're not going to get scrutinized, and it's not final. Failure mm. is never final. No. And then you are, you're, it does shape your mind to be okay with failing. Yeah. At the worst case scenario, let's say you do fail an engineering test or, or design test. Worst case scenario is you have to repeat that. But what does that mean in the big scheme of things? You know? Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't think yeah, failing. <laughs> but I understand what subject. you mean. Yeah. yeah. No. It, I've been exactly the same. I've had that mindset going, I mm. cannot for the life of me fail a test or an assignment. Forgot that. So it's... It is something that needs to be nurtured and your the people you work with, the school, the teachers, the parents have a big influence over that. Mm. So I'm glad that you're, you've got that mentality yeah. and that's brilliant. Now, let's talk about that one step further from failure. Have you heard of the term failing forward? Yeah. Um, yeah. So like I said, our school sort of talks about um, flirting. So I think that's sort of linked with it. So it's sort of like working through your fail failures and progress through failure. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And every time you fail, what does that mean to you? Um, depends on what sort of area. So yeah, yeah. Like let's see in the context of it. yeah engineering. Yeah. Um. So in engineering, uh, I, I know I've had a, like at least three or four assignments where like I really bombed it at the start. Like okay. the start, it just wasn't working for me. Everything was falling apart, and I was just feeling really overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And so, um. But my teacher, he, he really, like, he pushed me through it. Like, he was like, no, we, you can work through this. You, you can get it done. Like, mm. um, so I thought, like, um, probably the first time, it, it sort of um, was less overwhelming the more that I failed mm -hmm. at the start. Yeah. Because, like, looking back on it, I've got memories of completely bombing at the start and then creating something that is just amazing and I'm super proud of. Yeah. Um, and so... Yeah, uh, learning or failing forward is, um, yeah, I think I've gotten exposed to it so much that it's just a part of the process to yeah, me. Yeah. Um, and yeah, when I first started, um, cause I made a lamp and I use that lamp every day now, um, on my table. You made a lamp. Yeah. Um, Brilliant. So it was, it was one of the projects in design in year nine. Yeah. And so, um, we had to make a lamp with a minimalist design. Okay. And, um, so I came up with this cool idea and I was all excited. And, um, so we laser cut it and, uh, vacuum formed it and then I put it together and I went to put the four sides together mm -hmm. and the joints weren't properly made, like, mm -hmm. um, hadn't aligned them or they weren't big enough. And there was just so many problems and I couldn't get it to stay up. And we eventually worked through it and I learned a few different processes through like research and talking with the teachers about it. Yeah. And I got it to work and it's like one of the proudest things I've made and it's like I use it every day and yeah, yeah it's just something that um yeah it, it was I think that was a really big step for me yeah um in working through and like knowing that hey you'll fail at the start but that that doesn't mean that your end product will be a failure absolutely just, yeah. and I think if you now have to build that same lamp again you wouldn't be repeating those same mistakes. No, no exactly. exactly not. Because you know now, you're, you've grown, you've expanded. Yeah. And I think there's a there's a famous quote by John C. Maxwell that says, if you're not failing, you're probably not moving forward. Yeah. And I think that lamp scenario is exactly that. Mm -hmm. So you can come up with so many errors. If you're, Let's say you're engineering a bridge, big scale lamp. <laughs> yeah. But it's that same thing. You may come up with a new method to do it because it's a unique, it's a creative type bridge mm. new design not just over the water ticks the boxes yeah. you're pushing the boundaries so you're going to come up with problems that no one else has had before so what that means is you're going to have to find solutions so it's failing forward consistently and iterating and then you mentioned that you went to went online to research on how to yeah. do do methods on how to do that so was it just research or what what else did you do at that point when you occurred when you had a problem when you quote unquote failed <laughs> yeah yeah um, yeah, so a lot of it was talking with the teachers as well. Yeah. Um, cause I was just overwhelmed and <laughs> I was just, I was not, not feeling good about it. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, a lot of it was just talking with my teacher and I was just like, Hey, this is my problem. I, d I don't know what to do. And he was just like, well, like he, he sort of 
broke it down for me a bit and helped me um, figure out the like a lot of little things that um, I needed to work on and think of solutions for. And so I think breaking it down for me yep. um, into a smaller problem instead of, oh, no, it doesn't work. Like, so did he actually give you a solution or did he no. show you how to find the no. solution? He, he sort of guided me to yep. find a solution myself. Perfect. And I think that's a big part of learning or mm -hmm. um, failing forward yeah that you're not given the solution because that doesn't help you learn or build on anything it's a, it's about you discovering for yourself absolutely so, and yeah. you'll never forget that no no <laughs> perfect no. perfect yeah. now you're obviously very future oriented you can see into the future you've got plans in place i love that so do you think failing forward of learning multiple different labels that we ha we've discussed today do you think this is a key ingredients for your success in the future um yeah i definitely think it is because um i think that's where i grow the most mm -hmm. i know that the most challenging projects uh or assignments or years that i've had mm -hmm. um the ones that uh yeah i've really struggled through are the ones that i did the best in yep. in a sense yep. um it really pushed me and but it was motivating for me because um yeah i think that's sort of how i grow um, in my knowledge and in my problem solving skills. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I definitely think it is. Uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. That's, that's brilliant. And I love that being in year 11, you have that vision and, and you've been lucky enough to be go through an amazing school that's cultivated that, that facilitated it. Yeah. And so if you had to give some advice to, let's say schools and universities, what would your advice be to them to help their students fail? <laughs> um, yeah, it, for me, it, if I was to tell them, it would sort of be to do a lot of student-led design um, projects mm -hmm. uh, uh, where it's the student who's got the vision yeah. and they're leading the project. Yeah. And um, the schools and universities or whatever, they, they should be... Um, uh, sort of helping the foundations. They want to set the foundations, I guess, yep. um, in terms of like knowledge and obviously there's a task they need to set barriers. Yep. Um, but I think they should be the foundation and then the student should create um, or have a vision that they end up creating. And when they struggle through it, the school shouldn't just give them the solution or they shouldn't just um, give them the answer, but they should guide them and encourage them through it. Um, I think it's... A lot of it's, yeah, telling them to not give up or not just, um, uh, yeah, just throw it away and yeah. then just start in a new simpler design, um, but to keep pushing through the boundaries and tr keep trying to create something, because there will always be problems, but you can always work through all of them, so I think it's really encouraging um, uh, pushing through those problems um, to get the end product. So, yeah. Love that advice, man, and I think you are definitely a future visionary or that that is on point for the future of education i love it what about some advice for students so people your age maybe they might be a few years older or younger do you have any advice for them um yeah so i think uh failing is a difficult concept especially if you're a perfect a perfectionist or yeah. a high achiever um but i think uh, the more you expose yourself on the smaller levels as well, um, like with my lamp, for example, mm -hmm. I failed at the start, or like I didn't, I didn't fail the end product. Mm -hmm. The end product was amazing, but yep. I failed towards the start. And I think it's um, a lot of exposure and just get exposed to like pushing, pushing the boundaries at the start, and then working through what you failed on, um, and just getting comfortable with that. Because um, uh, failing when it counts is uh, harsh and painful. Yeah. Um, so try to do it when it when it's less important and then you'll get exposed to it and more comfortable with it and learn how to deal with it um, when it can be overwhelming. Uh, Absolutely. And I think that's brilliant advice, mate. Thank you so much for being here today, Shelby. And I know a lot of the teachers, educators, and even the students listening to today will get a lot of lot from what you've shared. So thank you so much. Yeah, cool. Thanks for having me. I want to end with a really good quote. Do not fear failure, but rather the fear of not trying. And I think that sums up very beautifully what today has been about and what Shelby has so humbly shared. So that's it for today, folks. Wrapping up season two, the student's perspective. Each episode is rich and valuable with learnings and insights into the student's mindset 
and experience and journey. A lot of different takeaways from different points of view, different age brackets and so on. But that's not all. I will be returning in season three of Inspiring Design with some incredible guests from all over the world. So stay, stay tuned. One last thing before we leave is to jump on to rashansenanayaka.com forward slash podcast and click on today's episodes for the show notes and check out Shelby's Lamp as well. Goodbye for now until season three. Click subscribe and share your thoughts and love with Watch your thoughts on this incredible students and their journeys. Till next time.